I came here, you know, in the late 70s and the 80s, uh, feminism was not exactly a big popular topic in academia. I can't emphasize how important that was to come here where to the left and to the right you felt like people shared the same values, where they felt women were important, women's lives were important, topics um, you know, that focused on women were important, women's careers were important. The reason it began is because uh, people didn't want to operate under the, women didn't want to function under the auspice of uh, a APA. So having an independent organization, you, you really had an opportunity to uh, focus on whatever you wanted to. And uh, by doing so, you could look at different uh, aspects of psychology that weren't supported within APA. And as AWP, maintains its independence from Division 35 and APA as a whole, we've always been able to nudge things further down the line and help people to be, uh, to take those chances to be more cutting edge and bring the society where it ought to be in terms of equality, justice, and uh, letting people be who they are. And, and it's a group that's, uh, that resists uh, the tyranny of those who are not feminists. So. And that's very important. We were just both intrigued with this feminist organization that was operating with a feminist process and a consensus model. AWP seems to me a much more activist, grassroots kind of organization where people are less interested in their professional stature within the discipline and more interested in creating change. I think that AWP allows for a more authentic experience and connection between being a human being and being a professional. And so I think that builds a nice bridge for my students to um, not feel like they're trying on a role coming here, but that they're really thinking about what is it gonna mean for them to be a feminist psychologist and what does that look like? Well, it means um, caring about principles. It means really caring about women, you know, as a whole group. Um, it's not just about ourselves and our own career. You know, we're not doing research on sexual assault just to get published so we can get promoted. We're doing research on sexual assault because we care about women and finding ways to support survivors and finding ways to inform policy. How shall we work and use psychology to make the lives of women better? And when I'm saying women, I'm not saying just American women. I'm saying how can we push so psychology transforms in such a way that the experience of women in the world is taken into consideration when we are saying this is the psychology of women. And realizing um, the differences in power and privilege and how um, you can uh, do therapy, do research, uh, do teaching with a consciousness around differences and what those differences mean to other people. A, a space for cultivating new ideas that wouldn't necessarily find the support in more traditional settings. You're bringing together people who have common interests and um, 
because most of us work in institutions where there aren't 10 other feminist psychologists, when you come to AWP, you have an opportunity to meet with other people. So it supports and, and is fertile ground for the development of new thinking and new ideas. Well, I really believe that AWP has been at the forefront of some of the major cultural shifts that have affected the larger field of psychology and also the whole culture. I don't think we'd be having a Me Too movement right now if it hadn't been for groundwork that had been laid by um, second wave feminists um, way back in the 20th century. One of my favorite stories is my first conference in the kind of mid to late uh, 1970s. There were six presentations on violence against women. I was stunned. I had never heard six people in a professional context talking about violence against women. I'd heard plenty of people talking about it in the grassroots movement. I went to APA a few months later. A huge conference, there were two presentations on rape in the entire program book that was that thick, because I looked through the whole thing, and one of them was on men's rape fantasies. Like even yesterday, sort of complicated conversations about sexuality and the Me Too movement, and then move into a, a wonderful panel about LGBT family studies and reactions post-Trump to, you know, how people have reacted to um, either having splits with their families or gotten more close with their families, and then to another panel, right, that's sort of thinking about menstrual health and menstrual resistance. Um, the coming out ceremony, for example, the first time I ever went, I came out as queer, and the second time I went, I came out as a suicide survivor. My brother had just recently ended his life, and um, I came here because I knew it would provide professional and, and personal healing, as it always does in some way, shape, or form. And so just to be um, held in that way that not only is AWP about fostering your professional self, but also how do you integrate your own identities, both old and new, into your professional self and into the work you do to make you a stronger psychologist. We cannot be effective, competent psychologists, social workers, nurses, whatever our field is, without actually having a feminist and multicultural um, perspective in the work that we do. push those young women of color into the fact that this is relevant for them also, of, of making sure that feminism is for everybody, to quote, I think, bell hooks, or, you know, that it's not just something for privileged white women who don't have anything better to do. And there was a project that we did one time um, between the Women of Color Caucus and the Jewish Women's Caucus. And what we did was we, um, each of us partnered or paired up with someone so that we can kind of connect on a conversational level about our identities, our struggles, um, the ways that we've coped through, um, our, our resiliencies. And it really made us um, think about some of the issues and some of the concepts, multicultural concepts, a little deeper. Uh, and how to apply it to the work that we do, whether it be research or clinical practice. I had never heard of, uh, I think they call the size acceptance caucus, being in a group of women who are like talking about fatness as a political sort of identity or as a tool of resistance, that really blew my mind. And, and in general, you know, raising the consciousness of people who come to the conference or who are members of the organization to realize that we really have to work for social justice, not just make sure that your career advances. And if your career advances and you're gonna have more influence in making other people think in a certain way, then it's useful. When I come to AWP, I feel, as I mentioned earlier, I feel at home. But it's something that, you know, I feel like it's a rejuvenation. It, uh, it's important. I come almost every year and it's the place where I get replenished, uh, rejuvenated. Um, I get my vitamin F is what we refer to as uh, vitamin feminism, vitamin F. And, and you know, have a dose of vitamin F. And you come here and people have that vitamin F, we call it, that you become energized and you feel, I can do this for another year. 
We can run another conference. What yeah. the heck? <laughs> <laughs> there is no other place for us to, to come together and hear each other in the same way in this space that is safe and affirming and that centers our experiences. I don't think I would have had this place to practice my ideas in public. I don't know how far I would have been able to take it, to tell you the truth. You know, I would give a talk. I'm good at talking. I would give a talk, and then the talk would become a paper. Uh, well, what if I hadn't had a place to give the talk? Where would the ideas have gone? I don't really know, and I, I'm scared to think that it, it, they wouldn't have gone any place. All these great ideas. I don't think I'd gone into teaching. Uh, but it was the encouragement here, or I wouldn't have written, because, but I did because of the encouragement I received here. So I'd be less than. I mean, I love AWP. For the last 15 or more years, I've been bringing both master students and now doctoral students here. They gain confidence uh, in being able to uh, present their work. Uh, they gain a sense of uh, sisterhood and uh, respect. Um, they gain a sense of camaraderie, laughter. You know, a combination of the workshops for practitioners and sessions for academic. It's where the academic and the practice meet in ways that they don't really meet, for example, at APA. But it's also like a gentle place where people can enter into the conversation where they, you know, feel all right about trying out their voice. Um, I, I guess I was really impressed with kind of the genealogy of feminist psychology. I didn't realize that, you know, for example, that my dissertation chair had this kind of enormous group of feminist psychologists who were operating in the world. And we had this big dinner and the first conference and it really, I was amazed at how these sort of lineages of feminist psychologists who, you know, come from other feminist psychologists. I really value the intergenerational aspect of AWP, and I think we have so much to learn from each other. 1991, I'm 25, 26. I go to my first uh, workshop, and it's by uh, Jean Baker Miller, who's a goddess, and my, my head blows off. And then I go to the next workshop, right down the hall, and it's Carol Gilligan. And then I'm like, I, I need to take a break. So I think I'm, I'm gonna go work out for a few minutes. So I go up to the gym and I'm working out, and I'm looking at the pool while I'm working out, and who walks by in the pool in one piece but Carol Gill Gilligan? And I'm thinking, where else can you actually be with people who are being themselves? And, um, I had one of my students was working at the registration desk, and I sent her up to my hotel room to get something for me, and she came back, and she was so excited, and she said, I went up in the elevator with Jean Baker Miller and I came down with Carol Gilligan. Like she was so starstruck. And it just reminded me of myself, you know, at that first meeting um, at the CUNY Graduate Center when Florence Denmark sat down on the floor next to me and asked me what my name was. So the thing about AWP is it wasn't hierarchical. Just as simple as being invited to dinner with people that you've been reading about and know only through literature. It can be really easy to fall into a hierarchy of education and feel like I am the learner and someone else is the teacher and that I need to simply be taking in what's happening. And I think through the values of AWP and the values of my advisor, to be able to recognize that this is a communal process and that um, my kind of questioning something has value as well. I think AWP does a really good job of just welcoming new members and educating you know, people, students, professionals, whoever that comes in to the organization. And I think that's, at least for me personally, when I've entered new spaces, I'm treated as the new person. <laughs> or, um, and that can feel othering, whether that's a new job or a new organization, a new group. And AWP is, is different, and I feel like, oh, you're new, it's celebrated. But unlike in other professional settings where you're never sure whether your personal life or your personal concerns or your activist side are welcome and are supported, let alone welcomed, I feel like AWP is that kind of space. And people have been around a long time, that's what it is. It's just seeing people and 
feeling, you know, warm fuzzies and, you know, getting support for projects and uh, uh, working with others to create some uh, journal article or edition or a book, you know, it's here. Uh, camaraderie and sisterhood and caring uh, are always relevant and never go out of style. And that that remains. Because if we're not having fun, there's no point at all, right? It's sort of, and I think AWP does do a good job at that, you know, having a dance, having, you know, various sillinesses. I think that's really crucial too. Just seeing all the young folk dancing with the older feminists was just, it was a celebration. Um, it was so joyful. <laughs> all I remember is uh, every time I come to AWP, um, Everybody asks me, you going to the dance? You going to the dance? Of course, I'm going to the dance. But why they ask me that? Well, I guess because I love to dance. <laughs> you know, it's just something I love to do. Yeah, have a good dance time. especially. Yeah. yeah, the dance brings me back. Just let's yeah, just cut to the chase. <laughs> the dance is my thing. But the rest of it is really wonderful. No, it really is a wonderful experience. And I just know... Even if it's painful, I right. will walk away feeling better about, maybe about myself, hopefully, but, but better about the place I'm in. It, it was just like this, like women's voices and excitement and all of that energy. And yeah, like I said, it just became home. It's like old home week. It's that support. It's that, it's that love. It's that mentoring. It's that friendships. <laughs>